how online education is going to help us to do some of the things that you've recommended in the book, how it's going to help us do a better job of um, educating future managers and uh, continuing managers. It's a, it's a, as you well know, even in the area of MOOCs, there's been a lot of evolution. That's been one area, I think, where we've had a little more of, what did you say, community property of, uh, in terms of <laughs> yeah. trying to see what, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. what has happened, what has worked and not worked. And, you know, when we did HPX, it was a completely different model than the standard MOOC model, very deliberately and very uh, carefully. Lots of discussion amongst us as to which model we should pursue, but we decided to go to a different model. I think there's a, there is clearly a lot of potential around uh, distance learning for three reasons. First, I think it allows you to do, for certain kinds of skills again, once you come back again to the kinds of skills you could do it in one way versus not, but it, for certain kind of uh, skills and knowledge, it allows you to do one-on-one -on -one learning. In other words, as, you can, as we continue to learn how to use distance learning, I might be able to design a way of teaching that might be different for you, Dan, than for Bo, or David, or me, because the way my brain works is a little different from how others do it. And so I might be stuck on one step that is completely clear to everybody else, whereas you're stuck on a separate uh, step that is different from mine. And today you're in a class, you kind of try to get there, but you know you, you do the best you can for the group of students you're trying to teach or help them learn. I think on from uh, in, in the context of distance education that could that level of the game could be raised quite substantially. There might there be a, of course still several steps to go. Second, I think it's very powerful in allowing and we're already doing this. Uh, you might say for instance, can you teach cases in a distance learning context? And I've been in one of those case discussion sessions that we have. And if you go to our HBX, uh, uh, the platform where we actually deliver this, the instructor stands on a stage. In front of the instructor are all the people who are participating virtually. They're not actually in front of the instructor physically, but they're in front of their computers with the camera. So all their pictures are there. Uh, you can uh, run a class discussion calling on individual people. You, they can each hear each other. Um, they can raise their hand, they can say they want to come in on this particular point, uh, they can do a side question to the instructor so that the instructor knows, okay, you know, I didn't quite agree with that, I may want to get in at this particular point. So there's a lot more information that could be handled in that context than I can do when I'm doing a case discussion in class. There are things that are lost, but I'm saying the level of the technology has gone to such a level that we can actually run a very effective place discussion virtually. The third thing I would say is that it allows you to, which has been a very powerful movement, I think, in education, reverse the classroom and the work that you do at home. So people can now look at a lecture, for instance, you know, virtually, and then work that they would have done at home, maybe problems, maybe discussions, maybe difficulties that they have, they can come to class and work on it. So. What used to be classwork and homework can now be flipped, uh, the so-called flipped classroom. And I think distance learning has that potential. But there are going to be things that we talk about in Rethinking the MBA that I think will be harder to do. I never want to say never, because you can, uh, people's ability to be innovative and imaginative and creative about solving those would, uh, could improve, the technology could improve. But things of the type that David was talking about, some of the doing skills that we were talking about, some of the being skills that we were talking about, maybe a little bit harder, but I say never want to say never. So let me add one other piece, because I think Trikant's done a marvelous job of overviewing. But there's, there's one piece that I think the technology has the potential to really emphasize a set of practical skills that we talk about in Rethinking the MBA. And I call it guided reflection or guided self-awareness. I'm actually in the process of, of working with HBX to develop a course on decision making. And what we found was that there was a tremendous need for relatively frequent interactions with students because they're online. And the opening question after some stage setting 
is think of a good decision you and your team made at work, and think of a poor or a flawed decision your team made at work, and characterize them. And then as they go through the course, there are prompts. To what extent were there representatives from multiple fields and departments? Did they take the general view, or did they take a highly specialized parochial view? How long did the decision process take to unfold? Was it a day, a week, several months? When was the decision actually made, and by whom? And by forcing them to interact, and then see how their peers, sometimes within the same organization, sometimes different, they're developing a set of self-awareness tools, which they can apply in real time. And that, I think, is a potential for the technology, which is just beginning to be explored.